Hi there. In this video, I want to show you how to derive an equation which is used in higher physics. An equation which first appeared in 1905 when Albert Einstein published his special theory of relativity. The inspiration for producing this video came from watching Why is Time Slower in Rockets, also known as Gamma Revolutions, produced by the channel 60 Symbols. There's a link to it at the top right hand side of the screen now, and I'd highly recommend that you watch it at some point. The equation we're about to derive concerns time, how time actually slows down in a moving inertial reference frame relative to a stationary observer. Now I use the term inertial reference frame there. In this derivation, we're going to consider two observers of the same event, one on Earth and one on a rocket. If the rocket's moving at constant velocity, so not accelerating or decelerating with respect to the Earth, then both the rocket and the Earth are inertial reference frames. In the theory of special relativity, there are two rules, known as postulates. First of all, the laws of physics are the same in inertial reference frames. And second, the speed of light in a vacuum is the same in inertial reference frames. These postulates seem fairly straightforward, but they have far-reaching consequences. So let's take a look at that rocket. Placed inside it, we have a mirror and something called a light clock. We'll also need an observer. Here he comes now. Now, what the light clock does is send out a pulse of light, which is reflected by the mirror back to the clock where it's detected, and immediately another pulse of light is sent out, and so on. Of course, on the rocket, the light pulse travels at the speed of light, three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. So the distance from the light clock to the mirror can be calculated using the equation distance is equal to speed times time. C is the speed of light and T naught is the time taken for the light to travel from the mirror down to the light clock. At least it is in this frame of reference. Viewed by a stationary observer on Earth, this time can be very different. Although, to notice a difference, the rocket has to be moving very quickly. Here's what the observer on Earth would see. They still see the pulse of light travelling from the light clock reflected by the mirror back down to the clock but the rocket's moving along from the left to right here, and so is the pulse of light. In this frame of reference, the light's travelling further. Now remember we said that in inertial reference frames, the speed of light's the same. The distance travelled by the pulse of light from the mirror to the clock, as observed in this frame of reference, on Earth, would be this. As I said, the speed of light C would be the same, but since the light appears to be travelling a greater distance, it takes a longer time t in this reference frame than it did previously. So, just to be clear, an event that took place in the rocket, the light pulse travelling from the mirror back to the light clock, takes time t naught when observed on the rocket, but takes a longer time t when observed on Earth. The important thing here is that the observer on Earth is in a different reference frame from the clock, so they measure a greater, dilated time. The observer in the same reference frame as the clock, the guy in the rocket. He measures what's known as the proper time. Now it's time to do some maths. I should also say at this point that the letters I'm using for the proper time and dilated time are different to the relationship sheet, but I'll clear this up later in the video. The amazing thing here is that we can derive our equation using very simple maths, Pythagoras' theorem. To recap, the distance travelled by the light as observed on the rocket is ct naught and the distance observed on Earth is CT. We also know this distance. The distance travelled by the rocket as the light pulse moves downwards from the mirror to the light clock. It's equal to VT, the speed of the rocket relative to our observer on Earth, multiplied by time T. The time is measured by the observer on Earth. So, here goes. Using Pythagoras then, we can see that CT squared is equal to CT naught squared plus VT squared. If we multiply out the brackets, we get this. C squared T squared is equal to C squared T naught squared plus V squared T squared. We'll then divide both sides by C squared. Next, we can subtract V squared T squared over C squared from both sides, giving us this. You'll now see that on the left-hand side, we have two occurrences of T squared, so we can simplify this side of the equation like so. Almost there. Our next step is to divide both sides by 1 minus v squared over c squared to make t squared the subject of the equation. And finally, take the square root of both sides, giving us our final equation. 
In the relationship sheet, the equation appears slightly differently. T dashed is used for the dilated time, in this case measured by the observer on Earth, and T is used for the proper time, the time measured by the observer in the same reference frame as the clock, the guy in the rocket here. Now I've changed the letters slightly in the derivation because T dash squared looks very odd and would lead to mass confusion and hysteria no doubt. Now you know where the equation came from, it's time to use it. So look out for the past paper video on relativity when it comes out. And if you're finding the videos useful, then remember to subscribe to get updates when new ones are released. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.